This has been a campaign season like none other. You have all observed, and I'm sure many of us uh, have felt that. Here to take a closer look is James uh, Riddlesberger, professor of political science at TCU. Thank you for joining us this morning. You know, there has been a lot of anxiety leading up to today. When was the last time there's been such a polarizing presidential election? Oh, my goodness. Um, this is really a unique time uh, in terms of that. I'm not sure we've ever had an election that was polarized in the way that this one is. Uh, this is something that's been developing over the last 40 years, really. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, it has kind of reached, reached its crescendo in 2020. And you know, at Pennsylvania, we've been hearing a lot about it. It's known as the Keystone State. Could it also be the key uh, to victory in this race? Well, there are so many states that could be key. Uh, in fact, if Texas is competitive, as some observers thinks that, think that it is, uh, Texas could be uh, the state that is the tipping point tonight because the difference between Texas and Pennsylvania is that, uh, and, and the same is true, by the way, for Florida and Georgia, uh, is those states uh, count their ballots early where uh, we may not know the results in Pennsylvania for two or three days. Uh, so, um, yes, Pennsylvania is key, uh, and obviously both candidates think that the person who wins that state is likely to win the election. But in fact, as we're watching results tonight, uh, keep an eye on Texas and Arizona and uh, Florida and North Carolina. All of those states uh, could uh, tip the election as well. Yeah, big time. You know, there are several states, including Pennsylvania, that won't have their mail-in ballots counted tonight. Could that be enough to hold up a decision? Absolutely, it could. Um, now, we have, you know, it's been a long time since we have uh, an election where we kind of had a good idea uh, by the end of election night. Of course, in 2000, the election went on for uh, nearly a month, but uh, because of the uh, conflict in voting, uh, counting votes in Florida. Uh, but, uh, you know, th th that could happen this year. It absolutely could happen again uh, with uh, very much increased reliance on mail voting and the fact that a number of states. Uh, don't require the votes to be uh, into the registrar today, but only that they be postmarked today. Yeah, the year 2000, how can we forget it? Um, do you expect this could land in the courts? Oh, absolutely it could. Um, again, uh, there are armies of attorneys for both sides right now. Uh, President Trump, of course, has uh, said that he is going to have uh, legal observers uh, in, in, in many of the key states and that he has a number of grounds for challenging uh, the results of the elections. Uh, but uh, you shouldn't underestimate the fact that the Democrats are aware of this and they also uh, have lawyers looking at uh, virtually one, every one of these issues. So there are a number of issues that could arise, uh, issues about uh, people qualified to vote. We could talk, have about problems of uh, cleanliness in the polling places, machines not working, um, people who are not registered uh, being able to vote or not being able to vote. You can imagine a whole bunch of scenarios that might end up as legal challenges. You mentioned Texas earlier, obviously playing a key role here this election. Will the national pundits be talking about Texas tonight? If so, what are some of the, the key topics you think they'll be uh, mentioning tonight? Well, uh, you, you know, Texas is the second largest state in the country. Uh, we have 38 electoral votes. Uh, and it's really uh, flown under the radar in terms of national coverage, uh, I think for two reasons. One is that neither candidate thinks that Texas is key to the election. Uh, uh, Pre Vice President Biden thinks he can win the election without winning Texas. Uh, President Trump thinks that uh, Texas is going to go for him uh, and that he doesn't need to worry about Texas. Uh, but in fact, what's happened is that in a sneaky kind of way, Texas has become more and more competitive. The national polls show that we're almost within polling error. There have been a number of national polls that actually show Biden ahead in Texas uh, for the first time for a Democrat since 1976. Um, so Texas could be very interesting. And the thing to watch is the turnout numbers in the big cities uh, in Texas, Houston, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, El Paso, uh, those tend to be overwhelmingly Democratic votes. We need to look at the satellite counties around uh, mm -hmm. those big city uh, areas, uh, particularly in the Dallas-Fort Fort Worth area, Collin County and Denton County, uh, down in the Houston area, Fort Bend County, all very high population counties, uh, and to see how those counties are breaking. And then we need to keep an eye on the border counties in Texas, the Rio Grande Valley, uh, where uh, there is a large Hispanic population. Those voters did not vote early in larger numbers than they have uh, in previous elections, particularly. Uh, so if there is a big same day vote uh, in the Rio Grande Valley, that could be good news for the uh, Democrats.
Yeah, lots of good information, and I know a lot of folks are going to be pinned to their TVs. They probably got the push alerts on. A lot of stuff going on. James Riddlesberger, a professor of political science at CCU, sir, thank you so much for that insight. Delighted to be here.